Travis Kelsey is back on tour with Taylor Swift and an A-list actress just finalized her divorce. Hi, welcome back to A Quick Look, a pop culture show where I'll be taking you through the biggest headlines, entertainment, and current events. I'm Zoe Jewell. Let's get into today's show. All right, guys, breaking news once again. Travis Kelsey is back on tour with his girlfriend, Taylor Swift, this time taking himself and his entourage down to Singapore. Now, it's been a little while since we've seen Taylor and Travis together. A couple of weeks have passed by. Obviously, Taylor did her first run of shows in Singapore last weekend. Travis has been really busy supporting his brother, Jason Kelsey, um, through his retirement announcement and sort of a little bit of celebration post-retirement. But following all of that, Travis made the journey to Singapore to support Taylor for her final few shows there. Um, and he didn't go alone. He once again brought his pals, brought his fr friends. He also brought his managers with him to the show, which is funny, I think. I mean, I'm assuming that, that they're probably friends, but it is a little bit, he just was like, yep, who wants to come? Let's all make the trek over to Singapore and we'll have a great time. I really admire the fact that Travis Kelsey has, he's basically collecting international Taylor Swift shows like Infinity Stones. He went to Argentina for his first show. Then he goes to Australia. Now he's in Singapore. He's probably obviously, I'm assuming, going to go with her when she does her whole European tour. Probably not for all of it, but he'll be going to a number of shows there before he even sees one era's tour in the States. Um, this guy is gonna be so well-traveled by the end of 2024, his passport is going to be like completely full with all the places he's going and concerts he's seeing. And I kind of love this for him because I don't know how much of a traveler Travis Kelsey is. I don't know how much he traveled before dating Taylor Swift, but I have to imagine that because of his schedule too, he probably doesn't get to like go out of the country very often or go see the world. And it's kind of fun that he is now getting to go see these places that he's probably never been to, thanks to his girlfriend playing these massive, massive shows in all these different countries. So that's a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I love the videos. This, this time around, Travis was not in the VIP tent. They were almost in like a suite, kind of like how Taylor, where, where Taylor would sit for Chiefs games and kind of look like that's where Travis and his friends were for the concert, probably because I think there was like five or six of them. I don't know the exact number, but there was a there was a good number of them. And so they probably wanted some space to kind of, you know, spread out. And because those those VIP tents are not the most spacious all the time. Um, but a lot of people, whenever Travis is at a show, people, Swifties, are always really curious to see what surprise songs Taylor sings because they always feel like they have a little nod to Travis whenever he's in the audience. For example, for his first show, she sang Endgame, um, which people have already kind of determined is like the Travis and Taylor theme song. Um, and all the lights in the stadium, all the wristband lights turn red and yellow for Chiefs colors. And so anyway, since then, everyone's always like, what are the surprise songs gonna be? Well. Taylor is on this mashup kick for her surprise songs. For those who don't know, she typically sings two, two different songs every single show that are not in the set list. And she does one on the guitar and one on the piano. Well, now, since she's kind of gotten back on tour, she's decided to start mashing up songs together, uh, which has been very fun. People love to see what she decides to put together. It's, it's a great time. Okay, well, let's let's discuss these surprise songs. So the first one she does is Sparks Fly mixed with Gold Rush, which I'm obsessed with both of those songs, love them so much, but also the theme, right? What what What's the theme of these two being put together? Well, Sparks Fly and Gold Rush are all about like the, the first feelings of falling in love with someone and like the kind of high high that you feel when you when you first fall in love. So... I mean, that definitely could be a Travis Kelsey nod. The second though is False God mixed with, and I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to say this, but slut. Um, and an, another kind of like, these are two 
much more sultry songs, sensual songs. So I'm saying that these two surprise songs were definitely directed towards Travis Kelsey. I don't know how anybody else feels, but I've just been loving these mashups. I've been loving, I, I feel like it gives fans, well, one, you get just, just to hear more songs, which is fun. But I think what's even cooler is like the mixing of the eras and like taking a song that she wrote when she was 18 and then mixing it with a song she wrote when she was 28 and vice, you know, kind of like, it's just a fun way to kind of go through her discography and her journey as a writer and artist and performer. Love all of that. There was also a really funny video of Travis and his friends dancing to Look What You Made Me Do. And it's just, there's something comical about like these six, five football player type guys, just like rocking out just in Taylor Swift. Like I love, love to see it. And then of course, as always, when, when Travis is in, in the audience, she's saying, karma is the guy on the chiefs. And I am once again, asking Taylor Swift to just permanently change the lyrics for good. I think everyone wants to hear karma is the guy on the chiefs. Um, it fits, it works. Permanent change, please. Thank you. So she has, I think, one more show in um, Arch or in Singapore, I believe, before her tour is officially over, um, or at least this portion of the tour, the Asia portion of the tour. Um, so I think I'm assuming Travis and his friends will stick around for the second show or the third show, I guess, of this leg. I don't know. She's done like, I guess in a total, she's done seven shows in Singapore. I could be wrong about that number. But anyway, when she's done this weekend. She's going to be off for the next couple of months. Uh, obviously she'll be promoting her new album that's coming out in April. There's going to be other probably stuff that she's going to be up to, but this is a nice little two month break for Travis and Taylor after what's been a whirlwind last few months with football, Super Bowl, tour, all this stuff. They can probably take a little bit of a chill pill, relax, be in one place for an extended period of time, um, and gear up for a European summer, which what sounds better than that? All right, moving on to our final story of the day. Natalie Portman has officially finalized her divorce from her husband after 11 years of marriage. So according to People, um, Natalie and her husband, Benjamin, filed for, filed for divorce actually eight months ago, but it has only now just been finalized. Now, if you've followed the story at all over the last year or so, it's been a little bit... Um, rocky to say the least. Um, the, the, this divorce comes about a year after the, there were a lot of reports that Benjamin had actually cheated on Natalie and was having an affair, which then led to them having a separation and now obviously finalizing their divorce, which is sad. Bummer. Never want to see anybody get divorced, especially after 11 years together, Mary. I mean, that that's a long time. They actually met, for those who don't know, they actually met while Natalie was filming Black Swan. He is a choreographer. And so he was working with her because obviously she had to learn how to do ballet for that film. So he was working with her while they were filming that. They've been together ever since. They have two kids. Um, and actually Natalie sort of addressed these, the speculation and the affair stuff um, in Vanity Fair. I believe like a month or two ago saying, quote, it's terrible and I have no desire to contribute to it, close quote. So here's to Natalie moving on to bigger and better things. I, I'm sure she will be just fine. Um, but yeah, another, another Hollywood marriage bites the dust. All right, guys, that is it for today's show. As always, let us know in the comments your thoughts, your feelings, your opinions. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.